Burlington News at Night for Thursday, January the 14th. I'm Colette Linden. I'm Craig Huckerby. We have a wintry mix to deal with tonight, but I have some really good news as far as that Arctic blast is concerned. 31 remote First Nation communities and the town of Moosonee will receive $6 million to help build winter roads. The much-needed funds will aid in the 3,170 kilometers of temporary snow and ice roads these communities will need to tend to for the 2021 season. This investment is part of a three-year funding commitment and will promote economic stability and ease the burden for remote communities to bring in essential goods and services. This announcement is in conjunction with the recently released draft transportation plan for Northern Ontario. This draft was released in December and outlined more than 60 actions to expand highways and transit services, create northern economic opportunities, keep people safe, and provide reliable travel options for remote and First Nation communities. Morning incident brought back to light whether face masks are necessary all of the time. A local gas station temporarily refused to allow a citizen of the city to pay for his gas inside because he could not wear a mask. The citizen was told they were going to call the police and when he offered to call APH it was explained to him what Algoma Public Health said wouldn't matter. There is a current order to wear a face mask but there are also exemptions to that rule like there are to the lockdown rules inside the province. Yesterday, Premier Doug Ford made an announcement alongside Christine Elliott, Deputy Premier and Minister of Health, Solicitor General Sylvia Jones and General Rick Hillier and provided an update on the province's COVID-19 vaccination plan and how Ontarians are now in full lockdown under a state of emergency. Unless it's essential reason, getting food, medicine, visiting the doctors or exercise, going to work, you must, you must, I'm going to repeat that, stay home, it's the law, and it will be enforced. I know that essential means different things to different people. We have 15 million people in Ontario, each with their own individual circumstances. So we need everyone to use their best judgment. If you're not sure if a trip is absolutely essential, it probably isn't. So please, you must stay home. With COVID-19 deaths in Ontario's long-term care homes surpassing 3,000, Premier Doug Ford has provided his strongest signal that the Canadian Forces personnel will be returning to those facilities. Ford said he will consult with the Ministries of Health and Long-Term Care to confirm if military support is needed, but he provided no additional details. Reminded by reporters again of his previous promise to build an iron ring around long-term care homes, both Ford and Health Minister Christine Elliott said that vaccination of all long-term care residents and workers will provide the most protection. I just got off the phone with the Prime Minister before I came out here an hour ago or so and uh, he's offered that up. We'll take all the help we can get. I never refuse help. If it's the military, if it's the Red Cross, if it's anyone. As per the, the Iron Ring, you know, I, I think the world of the PSWs, frontline health care givers, the uh, uh, caregivers that, that go in there on a, on a daily uh, basis, all I'm asking is please please make sure you get tested. I talked to all the long-term care homes uh, combined, all 626. The number one priority is to make sure they get tested, test as much as possible. That's how we're gonna capture it. It's not coming, it's not coming in through, through the walls and the ceiling. Inadvertently, through the great frontline healthcare workers or caregivers, it's coming in. The part two to that, we are vaccinating. Uh, through the great work of the task force and, and General Hillier. Uh, we, we set a goal of January 21st of the hot, hot areas, hot zones, and uh, hopefully will be done before the, the 21st. So those are the, the key areas. He has offered any help we need to, to secure the long-term care. We're working collaboratively together, very, very well together, and I want to thank the, the PM uh, for his collaboration. Uh, the last few words is anything I can help you with long-term care be it Red Cross or anything else, um, will just give me a call. So I never, ever refuse help. The more, the merrier. So we'll, uh, we'll deal with that. And I, I'll take all the help we can get right now. The Ontario government is taking additional measures to protect workers in response to rising COVID-19 cases. Beginning this Saturday and Sunday, approximately 50 ministry inspectors as well as local bylaw and police officers will be visiting big box stores in Toronto, 
Hamilton, Peel, York, and Durham. The Blitz will focus on ensuring workers and patrons are wearing masks, maintaining physical distance, and following every health and safety measure. Workplace health and safety inspectors will have the authority to ticket supervisors, employees, and patrons who do not comply with COVID-19 safety requirements, temporarily close a premise, and disperse groups of more than five people. Details of the new enforcement measures were provided today by Monty McNaughton, Minister of Labour, Training and Skills Development. Ontarians have received emergency alerts on their cell phones, radios and televisions telling them to stay home. The emergency message on the province's stay-at-home order that is now in effect was sent by the Ministry of the Solicitor General through the province's Alert Ready broadcast system. The message asks people to only leave their homes for essential purposes such as food, health care, exercise or work. It is the latest attempt to communicate the new public health measures that came into effect today as COVID-19 case counts surge. The province has said there's no set definition for what is essential because everyone has their own unique circumstances and regional considerations. Premier Doug Ford has urged people to use their best judgment in deciding whether to go out. As of Wednesday, Ontario was reporting a total of 224,984 COVID-19 diagnoses since the pandemic began. Of those, 29,636 cases were still active, while 5,127 people have died. Hi again everyone, well we're looking at a sloppy mess for tonight or at least developing tonight into our Friday morning but if you're not into that face numbing cold I have some really good news coming up. Stay tuned. Do your part to help stop the spread of COVID-19. Wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Cough into your elbow, not into your hand or in the air. Avoid touching your face, eyes, and mouth. Keep your distance from people. Stay at least six feet away from others. If you're feeling sick, please just stay home. Do the five and keep others alive. Help stop the spread of COVID-19. 20 years ago, a little friend of ours got a lot of attention from Canadians. The idea of a tiny hippo that could actually be living in our homes got us talking about how easy it is to be fooled by what we see. Today, the internet is full of things that look just as real. In our digital world, we need to think smarter and double check before we believe anything we see. Find out how at breakthefake.ca. Welcome back everyone. Well, we made out pretty good today. We had a little bit of a uh, mist out there, but feeling more like March still. This is going to be our last day of that. We'll take a look at the uh, temperatures for tonight. Hovering around the freezing mark, about plus one. We should drop to about the freezing mark later on tonight. We could see some uh, gusty winds, so it's going to feel a little cooler out there because of that. And a chance of drizzle and light flurries. Again, not going to accumulate too much tonight. That's going to wait till Friday morning. We'll take a look at the overnight lows for the area and pretty much we're all pretty much the same hot spot is Thunder Bay at plus one. Again, we're going to be falling to the uh, freezing mark minus five, minus six and 10 minutes, minus five in Wawa. So basically we're still above seasonal, at least for one more night. We'll take a look at the um, satellite shot. And this is the Alberta Clipper coming in for, uh, actually it's starting to come in tonight. That's why we could see that risk of freezing drizzle and some light flurry activity. But for the most part, this low is kind of falling apart. It's going to reorganize, drop behind the Great Lakes, and then uh, give a nice winter storm for the eastern seaboard, which has been the case all winter long. We'll show you in detail on the surface map if we make this in motion. There it is right there, the low pressure system coming in for, this is Friday evening. And you can see we're seeing a mix of uh, rain and snow and then we're going to clear out for Saturday and for Sunday leaving us basically with some cloud. Temperatures are going to go uh, south on Sunday where we're going to see temperatures uh, really fall off to about minus six for our daytime high. We'll take a look at the three-day forecast for you. Um, not looking all that bad to start with. Uh, again tomorrow we're going to be warm in the morning and we could see some periods of rain changing the freezing rain, then snow. Accumulation amount right now, I'm going to say three centimeters. 
for Saturday, a uh, mix of sun and cloud. We're going to dry, or dry out for, for Saturday with temperatures around plus one and then minus six. We see that cold air coming in behind that front on Sunday, but a mix of sun and cloud. For the long range forecast, again, we have a little bit of snow to deal with. That could be from lake effect on Monday, temperatures falling off to minus five. These are actually seasonal temperatures. That's where we should be for this time of year. And overnight, really not all that bad. We don't really see that, uh, that really cold air coming in at all now, uh, despite what the models were telling us earlier in the week. So we're just gonna fall off a little bit uh, to seasonal values and really can't really complain about that. That's your weather for right now. Colette is back in just a little bit with more news. Aiden, get dressed. Buddy, <laughs> no, 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 no. <sighs> Almost there. Lift your leg. Yep. Aiden, get <laughs> dressed. For someone with MS, living in a body that doesn't listen to you some days, get dressed, can be an act of greatness. The Ontario government has issued an emergency order to temporarily pause the enforcement of residential evictions and ensure people are not forced to leave their homes during the provincial declaration of emergency and while the stay-at-home order is in force. This is the second time in less than a year that the province has paused residential evictions. This emergency order will also protect homeowners who are facing evictions due to court orders for possession of their properties. Since the onset of COVID-19, Ontario has introduced a number of measures to protect tenants and provide supports to those most affected by the pandemic, such as freezing rent, so the vast majority of Ontario's residential tenants will not see an increase this year. Changes to the Residential Tenancies Act also requires the Landlord and Tenant Board to consider whether a landlord attempted to negotiate a repayment agreement before resorting to an eviction for non-payment of rent during COVID-19. The latest modelling trends and key public health indicators have continued to worsen, forecasting an overwhelming of the health system unless drastic action is taken. The pause on residential evictions is one part of the province's plan to stop the spread of COVID-19. In the wake of the riot and storming of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. on Wednesday, January the 6th, Airbnb has made a hard and fast decision about offering sanctuary for individuals who would seek to disrupt the peaceful transfer of power. With seven days to go before Joe Biden and Kamala Harris assume the presidency and vice presidency, tensions are extremely high. On January the 13th, Airbnb released a statement in response to various local, state and federal officials asking people not to travel to Washington, D.C. for the inauguration of the 46th president. According to the statement, guests whose reservations are cancelled will be refunded in full. They will also reimburse hosts at Airbnb's expense, funds that they would have earned from cancelled reservations. Hotel Tonight reservations will also be cancelled. The province of Ontario has notified the public of a positive staff case in a school in Sault Ste. Marie. Francis H. Clerg Public School is reported to have one staff member who has tested positive for COVID-19. So online reached out to ADSB and received a response from Fran Walsh, the communications manager for Algoma District School Board. She sent a statement saying that they are waiting for further information from Algoma Public Health and will update the public as soon as possible. The Ontario government is strengthening fire safety training across the province by increasing access to on-site and online courses in communities where firefighters serve. Enhancing training opportunities offered through 20 regional training centres will help local fire services better meet the needs of their community and result in cost savings for municipalities. Building on a regionally connected system of training centres, the Office of the Fire Marshal will deliver fire safety training through a combination of in-person training at regional training centres, online courses and through contracts with individual fire departments. Expanding local training opportunities will increase capacity for training and reduce the need for municipal fire departments to pay for travel and costs related to overtime and shift backfills. So Craig, you mentioned we're not going to get that wintry blast. Tell me a little bit more. Is that good? Get we're, bad? we're going to see colder temperatures. Like okay. it's going to feel colder because of the warm air we've had, but we're not going to see those face numbing, cold, oh. bitterly cold <laughs> arctic blast well, coming that's good news indeed it is but drive carefully tonight though because it could be a little slippery okay thanks for that and uh, stay safe for thursday january the 14th this has been your news at night i'm colette linden stay tuned for more news and weather coming right up
When social distancing, remember, stay at least six feet away and wear your mask. Help save lives.